E do la parola al professor Ludwig Kostro dell'Ateneum School of Higher Education di Gdansk in Polonia, che ci parlerà di Lambda Units and Lambda Mega Quantum of Action in their historical context. Prima di tutto voglio ringraziare gli eh, organizzatori di questo congresso per l'invitazione a questo congresso, al professor Augusto Garuccio e al dottor eh, Luigi Romano e eh, tutti gli altri, eh, anche il Presidente qui pre, eh, presente adesso, eh, perché la sessione a onore di Franco Celleri eh, considerava lui come amico, ha influenzato tanto la mia carriera eh, eh, scientifica. Eh, lo considero come uomo di un grande eh, livello di eh, onestà intellettuale e onestà morale. Era anche un buon eh, didattico. Tutti i suoi libri, articoli e interventi che ho sentito sempre erano molto precisi. Mi scusino che parlerò in inglese perché eh, così sarò... Eh, Potrei un po' abbreviare la mia. Let me introduce first the players of uh, uh, the title. Uh, is, uh, let me introduce first the players. Uh, oh no, this is not here. Yeah. In my talk, I am going to introduce a toy model of some domains of the physical reality in which the Einstein's cosmological constants lambda plays its important part. I call it toy model because I shall play with universal constants recognized in our human physics. There are the players in the proposed game. My purpose is only to indicate some new aspects connected with dark energy. Of course, the objective problems connected with dark energy cannot be resolved only by playing with constants. They must be resolved, first of all, by hard, sophisticated mathematical work and by always more precise observations and experiments. Let me introduce first the players that I will use most frequently in the lambda toy model of our observational universe. C is very well known, it is a limited velocity of transfer of energy and momentum. Uh, the velocity of light is the best example of such a limitary transfer. Note that also C raised to the second power, the third, four, are limitary physical uh, quantities. For instance, C raised to the second power is the limitary scalar gravitational potential present, for instance, in the G00 component of the metrical tensor. G is also well known as the coefficients in the equations of Newton. Uh, in the standard model of universe, G has some physical meaning. Its inverse indicates the relation between the average time-dependent density of the ponderable gravitational mass in the universe and the age of the universe. According to a Polish uh, astrophysicist Sikorsky, this relation is the fundamental relation operating in Friedman equations. Kappa is sometimes called Einstein's gravitational constant. It is a complex constant composed of G and C raised to the fourth power. It is the coefficient that is a component of his general relativity equation. It has the dimensions of an inverse force, as we will see, of the lambda force. As well known in general relativity, we do not speak about gravitational force. Gravitation is considered as a result of the curvature of space-time. 
However, the generative equation that contains in itself the force with kappa in a hidden way is not complete. When we would like to apply it to the whole universe, there must be introduced into it a centrifugal pressure to avoid the gravitational collapse. This pressure consists in the acting of the lambda force on an inverse surface that is just lambda. So we see that the force uh, one divided by kappa is not a gravitational force, but the lambda force. It is present, for instance, in the action Lagrangian at the first place. Lambda is cosmological constants. I take the value from 2050. Yes. It has, as it was mentioned already, the dimension of an inverse surface, the side of which is equal to the lambda length. The lambda surface, the inverse of lambda, is given by this equation. The lambda length is a square root of the lambda surface. And it is, you can see, very long. Lambda length is equal 9,68 billion light years. Also, the lambda time is very long, 9,66 billion years. When Einstein in 1970 applied his general relativity to the whole universe, he became aware that because of gravitation, his universe will c collapse. But he was convinced that the universe is stable. Therefore, to introduce equilibrium and stability, he introduced an anti-gravitational pressure of the vacuum. We are dealing with pressure when a force is acting on a surface. In our case, it is the lambda force acting on lambda surface. This force is, uh, in our human scale, very weak. 10 to my, the pressure is very weak. 10 to minus 10 newtons on meter square. In our human, uh, the lambda pressure is known since long time in relativistic cosmology but the majority of lambda units that I try to introduce are unknown. The constant lambda energy density, the constant dark energy density is also well known since long time. When we multiply the lambda pressure with unity, where we have divided the square root from lambda divided by square root, then the lambda force will become lambda energy and lambda surface will become lambda volume. So by means of a mathematical operation, the equation of lambda pressure is transformed into the equation of lambda energy density. My purpose is to introduce the whole list of lambda units in order to show other features of dark energy. Like Boltzmann has introduced his demon and Schrodinger his cat, let me introduce the toy point observers, viewers existing from the beginning of our universe. Each of them has his sphere of observation, his visible sphere, in his small scale world and in his large scale world. The background radiation is seen in each observation sphere as their visible horizon. The radius of each observation sphere increases with time. The horizon runs away with the velocity of C. Each observation sphere is in its inside causally bounded because of the cosmic speed limit C of all interactions. And the expanding space of the universe, the causally bounded observation spheres can be separated, like we see here, can touch 
or partially cover each other. According to our present day knowledge, our universe is flat, at least in the scale of our observational sphere, and therefore we can use with great approximation to such a sphere the Euclidean equation of sphere volume. When the universe was 9,68 billion years old and its observation radius was 9,68 billion light years long, its lambda sphere volume is given here by the equation. When we turn back our clocks, when we can imagine the past, the observation spheres would be seen smaller and smaller and the toy points observers would be closer and closer to each other. But there are minimal limiting distances between them. If we assume at the beginning Planck era, then Planck length will be the limiting distance. Uh, we know very well this picture. Uh, lambda units and lambda mega quantum of action concerns the mysterious and very unknown dark energy, 88,3%. We do not know the composition of dark energy, but we know an important date in its history. The state had placed grosso modo five billion years ago when our universe was 9,68 billion years old. Uh, uh, the picture shows the evolution of our observational universe in 14 billion years. As we know, about five billion years ago, our universe began to accelerate its expansion. The centrifugal action of dark energy overcame the centripetal action of gravitation. The process of rarifying of the ponderable matter. Here we see an acceleration, but the ponderable matter became uh, rarified. This is also a picture of the same thing. It is interesting to note that the beginning of the acceleration of the concentrations of the ponderable matter clusters of galaxies in the universe coincide with the lambda time and with the lambda length. Many authors talk about the birth of a new epoch-making era, the Lambda era. At the time, at the critical moment, the Lambda energy density remained constant, but the average mass density of the ponderable matter began to slow down because of the mentioned rarifying process. So the concentration of ponderable matter, clusters of galaxies, begin to be accelerated more and more intensively because of lambda pressure. The expansion of the ponderable matter in the universe became more and more significant. When the date uh, 9,68 billion years passed, um, then the first complete portion of a uh, quantum of dark energy fully appeared. At that moment, lambda energy reached its full value. We have this equation gives this value. At the same moment, the event of the first mega lambda quantum of action fully occurred. When we compose a list of this uh, lambda units, you see that the lambda mega quantum of action from the point of view, aesthetically, looks very well. One divided by the three constants, Einstein constants. But it is very great, of a great scale, 10 to 86 true, or here 10 to 95 giga electron volts. 
I shall return to introduce more details later. Now, general data regarding the so-called natural units. In physics, we use conventional units. For instance, nowadays, the SI system. There were physicists, Stoney, Planck, Keitel, and others, that introduced units called by them natural units because they are determined by universal constants that govern in our universe. Let me say first some words about Stoney's units. In, 19, in 1874, the Irish physicist Stoney, who is famous for his introduction of the term electron to describe the elementary unit of electricity and for his calculation of its value from Faraday's law of electrolysis, introduced his physical units of nature determined by C, G, and E, the elementary unit of electric charge. Stoney expressed them in the framework of the EGS units. The scientific community has recognized his discovery uh, of the electron, the existence of which was proved experimentally in 1897 by Thomson. But Stoney personally was convinced that the discovery of his natural units is more important, and therefore he published his paper with the title Physical Units of Nature. In the SI system of units, Stoney's units are given by these values. You see that, that Stoney's time is equal to 10 to minus 45 seconds. It's very tiny. Among Stoney's units, there is also his quantum of action, but also very small, 10 to minus 37. Many known physicists, for instance, Eddington, Schrodinger, indicated that the ratio of Stoney's quantum of action and Planck's quantum of angular momentum, kappa barata, gives the Sommerfeld fine structure constant. Oh, excuse me. At the turn of 19th and 20th century, Max Planck has not only introduced his very important constant, um, called by him the elementary quantum of action, but he has also at the same time introduced his natural units determined by three universal constants, C, G, and his constant H. The scientific community has soon recognized the importance of Planck's constant that became the quantization parameter of the newborn quantum mechanics. But as regards Planck's units, the scientific community has long time ignored them. So Planck, during 12 years, has added to all his papers, his units, believing that the community will finally recognize also the importance of his units. Later, in order to avoid the mathematical collapse of the whole universe into a mathematical point, the Planck's units were introduced ad hoc into modern cosmology. Especially the, the cosmologists, for avoid the mentioned collapse, have recognized their importance, and nowadays we speak even about the Planck's era existing at the beginning of the cosmic Evolution. Today, uh, uh, the introduction of uh, uh, the units of Planck was first done using units introduced by Planck himself. And we see here the time is 10 to minus 43. We are able today uh, measure time to minus 23. Um, perhaps I am wrong, but. I remember such a number. But here we have a time that is 10, a 10 to minus 43. And afterward, using Planck's units with Akabarata, in such a way, Planck's era at will of cosmologists became 
two and a half times shorter. You see here uh, we have 10 to 44 seconds. Dark energy is mysterious, but we know much better the ordinary matter, uh, the leptonic and hadronic matter. The last is composed of hadronic and mesonic matter. Let me now touch the leptonic matter in which electrons are its stable components. When we try to bring together two electrons, then the Columbian repulsive force increases, and when they arrive at the Stoney's distance, the two toy zero observers find themselves so close in their small scale world. The Columbian force increases to the maximum limitary Stoney force, that is 10 to 44 Newtons. In such a case, we will deal with a great explosive uh, repulsive material. The activity of dark energy was at the time entirely negleg negligible, negligible and very insignificant. To bring together two electrons at the Stoney's distance, we need to use energy equal to Stoney's energy. The representative Stoney's mass is given by this equation. When we divide the Stoney's mass by the rest mass of an electron, we become aware how many rest masses of electron is contained in Stoney's mass, 10 to 21. If the Stoney's mass decays into electrons and positrons, then we have again an explosive material. The electrons and positrons can transform into gamma photons. Perhaps the beginning of the ordinary matter, we have to put a Stoney Dirac leptonic era. Stoney's time is shorter than Planck's times. You see here. 10 to minus 44, and Planck's with the Akabarata is 10 to 44, but with Planck's uh, units by, introduced by uh, Planck itself is 10 to minus 43. Perhaps the leptonic era preceded the hadronic one. Perhaps the hadronic era of quark luon plasma was after the leptonic era. Some historical data concerning the physical quantity called action. In physical processes, we are dealing always with the transfer of momentum and of energy along certain distance and during certain time, and also with the transfer of angular momentum in rotational motion when the angle of rotation changes. At the beginning of of 20th century, the quantic nature of action and angular momentum was discovered in the micro world. This quanta are interpreted sometimes as fundamental physical events because we deal in such cases with quantum transfer of energy and momentum along a certain distance and during certain time interval. The non-Polish physicist Czesław Białobrzewski has often pointed out that action is the richest in meaning physical quantity because the notion of action expresses a physical dynamical process in which dynamical quantities are connected with space-time quantities. We see here the dynamical quantities and here the space-time quantities. The evolution of the dynamical conception of causality in classical physics. I learned it when I was in Perugia. I find in the library of the uh, Università Peri Stranieri a book in which the author has shown that the uh, category of uh, cause according to Newton was the force itself. 
the effect was acceleration. But Cartesio uh, said the force can do something when it acts a certain time. And so for him, the, the category of uh, cause was the impulse of force and the effect increase of momentum. But Leibniz said the force to do something must act along certain uh, path. And therefore for him, the cause in uh, physics is the work and the result is kinetic energy. But Maupertuis said the force must work along certain path and during certain time. And so he defined the quantity called action. It is also work multiplied by uh, time or so impulse of uh, the force multiplied by land. This is the definition from the side of F effect. The physical quantity called action has been introduced into physics by the mention of Maupertuis. Maupertuis formulated also the least action principle. However, when the variational calculus was being introduced into the examination of the mention and principle, it has became, it uh, has been discovered that action is submitted to a larger variational principle because it is not only a minimum, but in certain cases it can be also a maximum. Therefore, it is now more correctly to call it principle of extremal action. It is often called also principle of stationary action. The principle was central in the classical physics and remains central in modern physics being applied in the theory of relativity, special and generally in quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. In general relativity applied to the cosmos, that is with Einstein cosmological constants, uh, the Lagrangian of action has the following form. Here is the lambda force, here R is the Ricci curvature scalar. This symbol means the, uh, is describing any matter fields appearing in the theory. And then we have also the components of the metrical tensor. Planck's astonished quanta of action are very small. In the SI system of units, Planck's constant is given by the following numerical values. 10 to minus 40, 10 to minus uh, 34, and 10 to minus 37. But the lambda quantum of action has a mega value. Oh, pardon. In two papers, I presented the whole list of units determined by the three mentioned constants. I call them lambda units because they are determined also by the cosmological constant. Here's the whole list. I have underlined here this that are already since long time known. Lambda mass density, lambda pressure of physical vacuum, and he, what's going on? Here we have lambda energy density, the force, but the other uh, quantities are not known. Among lambda units, there is not only the lambda mega quantum of action, but also the mega quantum of angular momentum. Look, they, aesthetic, uh, they look aesthetically very well, but have they any physical meaning in the large scale world? Does correspond to them anything in the large scale physical reality? Can we attribute a spin to all observational causally bounded spheres? When we introduce the lambda 
quantum of action into the action Lagrangian of general relativity, it looks like that. In such a way, we can see how the action in general relativity with lambda depends in a natural way on the lambda mega quantum of action. The proposed toy model fits with the de Broglie relativistic wave mechanics that was introduced at the historical beginning of quantum mechanics. De Broglie started with the assumption that H nee equal mass raised to the second power. Let's follow him with respect to lambda quantities. Then the lambda wavelength is equal to lambda land. And the lambda wave period is equal to lambda time. Let's repeat that the lambda mass is a relativistic mass. The dark energy is a pure energy and its corresponding mass is not a rest mass. The lambda wave is observed by the toy observers in their observational spheres, a spheric wave, the front of which is running away in all direction with the velocity c. Its frequency is once every 9,68 billion years. Let's return to my Pertuis oper uh, operational definitions of the physical dynamical cause considered as physical action event. Remember also that Maupertuis was the physicist who introduced action to physics. And let's apply them to the causality of dark energy. Its repulsive action caused by the centrifugal lambda force is an all direction of expansion with respect to each chosen toy point observer in our universe. When our universe was 9,68 billion years old, in every causally bounded observation sphere, a lambda quantum of action occurred. We need still a mega quantum of uh, centripetal action of the ponderable matter. In Kittel's set of units, the quantum of action for concrete ponderable mass M is given by this equation. In the critical moment when the pressure of the dark energy overcame the gravitational attraction of the ponderable matter in each observable universe, the average density of ponderable matter was, according to the Friedman relation, here we have the numerical value, but then H gamma is equal 8P, uh, the lambda uh, quantum of action. At the critical moment, the first lambda mega quantum of action occurred, the density of the ponderable matter mass and energy began to decrease, can Hg that occurred also at the critical moment be considered as constant or is it time dependent because the density of ponderable matter slows down? The H lambda and Hb, both of them occurred for the first time at the critical moment. Are they the two constants that can become parameters of the future quantization in mega scale? I am not able to answer this question. I ask it to the scientific community. Since in each visible sphere, the distribution of the ponderable matter, dark energy and ordinary matter is very random and lambda stands in relation with the metric tensor with its components, therefore, we can try to introduce mega Heisenberg uncertainty relations concerning dark energy and ponderable matter. That is only my suggestion. 
Perhaps the unification of relativistic cosmology and quantum mechanics has to be done in the large scale, in the mega domain, and not in the small scale one. Oh, I omit this. Gravitational and lambda interactions are entirely negligible and insignificant in micro world of the elementary particles, but they are very significant in mega scale among celestial bodies, galaxies, and especially among the clusters of galaxies, and therefore H lambda and Hg can play their part only in mega scale. Therefore, for instance, we have discovered gravitational waves when two great black holes collide. We must be aware that mathematical models of reality are not the reality, but only our mental constructions that help us in our cognition of the reality. The mathematical model of the atom of hydrogen is not an atom of hydrogen, as well as the mathematical model of our universe is not the universe. All our mathematical models contain approximations and sometimes dangerous simplifications. We must control and investigate the degree of approximation and simplification. We must control if the degree of approximation and simplification are still admissible and therefore good or bad. In a good theory, the degree of approximation should be the highest possible and the degree of the bad simplification the lowest possible. Uh, Roger Penrose published a book with the title Fashion, Fate and Fantasy. Perhaps the introduced in my talk, toy model, belongs to models created only by my human fantasy. And Einstein, if he was present at our Congress, he would get a loud laugh of it like that. Thanks for your attention.